So in this problem, we want to find the probability current for the free particle wave function. So what we have to do is to try to substitute this wave function into this expression, and that will give us the probability current. So you can see that we need to consider the conjugate of the wave function, which will be equal to something like this. So you have e to the power of i something. So if you take the conjugate, you just put a negative sign in front of the i. So the conjugate of xi is just equal to putting a negative sign in front of the i. And we also need to apply the conjugate to the constant a. So this whole expression will be the conjugate of xi. And then here you see that we also need to take the derivatives of these two expressions. So taking the derivative of xi, you see this is an e to the power of something term, so I can just retain all this. And then I apply the chain rule by differentiating the exponent, and which is equal to ik. So you're just differentiating ikx, which is equal to ik, and then this t term here just goes to zero because t is not affected by x. And then you see that we also need to differentiate the conjugate, so we do just that. So we retain all these terms, we have the conjugate of a, and then we have this e term over here, and then we just apply the chain rule. So just like before, this time we get negative ik. So now we're ready to substitute all this into this expression over here. So first of all, you see we have xi multiplied by the derivative of the conjugate. So you see that the a's, they multiply together to give you the absolute value of a squared. And then you see that the e terms, when they multiply together, is just going to be equal to 1. So you have e to the power of something times e to the power of negative of that something. So that's just equal to 1 if you multiply them together. And then you also have this negative ik. And then here for the second term, we have the conjugate multiplied by the derivative of the of xi. So once again, you have two a's, they multiply together, could give you the magnitude of a squared. And once again, the e terms, they both cancel out to give you a 1. And then you have this ik term over here. So you see that we have we actually have two of these identical terms. So we have negative 2ik, the absolute value of a squared. And the first, the, these twos, they cancel out. And I can multiply the i's together to give us i squared. And i squared, by definition, is just equal to negative 1. So this negative 1 combines with this, uh, this sign over here to give us a positive sign. So in the end, we're left with something like this. We have h bar times k divided by m times the absolute value of a squared. So this is the answer.